Hello, we continue our journey into the unknown, or at least it was once an unknown. So, the story goes like this. Okay, we know our protons, we know our neutrons, we know the structure of the atom. It was a great time to learn about the nucleus. Okay, chemists and physicists were working together, making great discoveries. It was an amazing time to study chemistry. Basically, you got, you got a, a nice periodic table, you know, the groups, you know, the properties, you got names for a whole bunch of elements. People were very, very, very amazed and very happy. At some point, we we kind of, the chemist was like, um, I guess we're satisfied, we're fine, we got our table, we know our properties. It's more than we need to know, okay? But then the physicists were like, wait, 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 but, but, but is the fundamental particle the proton, the neutron? Surely there must be more than that. And so, they were asking the question, are there any more fundamental, or I guess you could say, elementary particles that is smaller than the proton? or a neutron. And yes, you can see this picture here. They see like, okay, if you're a proton or a neutron, actually you can zoom in somewhere and there's these three things here. What are these three things? Ah, that's what we'll look at today. Okay, these are what we call quarks. They're like, what are quarks? Well, they are just fundamental particles. That's why this section is called fundamental particles. So if you look in scale, what we're doing is we're really zooming in closer and closer where chemistry left off. And we're going where no man has journeyed before. Oh no, no science has journeyed before. So go smaller, zoom into atom, you get nucleus. Zoom into the nucleus, you have proton and neutron. Zoom into the proton, you get quarks and electrons. And is there anything smaller? That can we break down the quarks somehow? We don't know. Honestly, I don't know. If you discover this in the future, please win the Nobel Prize, okay? So anyway, how do people do this thing? Huh? Well, they were, I guess you could say, inspired by Rutherford's experiment. Rutherford's like, oh, I don't know what's inside. Let me shoot alpha particles in. Pew, 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 pew. And I guess that's a habit that physicists have. You don't know why it is. You just shoot things at it. Shoot things together to make them explode and see if you can see what's inside. You take a watermelon, you take a pumpkin, you throw together, you see the thing explode, what come out. La. That's how you study. Okay. So they make things like these. Um, this is what we call a particle accelerator where people use study high-energy particle physics. You see this long blue tube, right? Accelerator. Basically, the particles inside there are flying down the tube. Lah, and it goes in the ring. We'll see more pictures later. Okay, So they'll be shooting together, I guess, gold, gold nucleus or whatever element they choose to shoot inside there. Okay, They'll speed it up with electric fields and things like that. And inside there, it's kind of a hard picture to see. It looks something like this. Lah. You have lots of rings. There's only a tiny, tiny hole where the particle will travel through. Uh. So it's going in the middle of all these rings, which we'll figure out what we do. I took this picture. Nice, right? We got to visit Fermilab, one of the premier areas, uh, old, it's old place, lah, where they first started to shoot things together in all these pipes. These chambers, we call them. And of course, people discovered stuff. It's like, oh, when you shoot things together, it explode. The proton explode, come out, got things. So the proton is not a fundamental particle anymore. Anyway, so they made it bigger, particle accelerators, and they built, I guess it's one of the biggest ones, okay? It's an institution called CERN, and this is the Large Hadron Collider. Have you heard of it? No? Okay. Pretty cool stuff. Very amazing discoveries made in the past few years. LHC. Okay. So a beam particles come out, beam and then they smack them together. If you're wondering, wow, all this big, big stuff, ah, you need a lot of energy to speed up particles, you know, okay? So what they do is they smash particles together and I guess let's, let's say this red beam is a particle come in, particle come in. Then suddenly when they hit, oh, explosion happen. All kinds of particles come out. So they need to study one by one. Oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? And depending on how much they deflect, they can roughly tell how heavy is this particle. And if there's no particle with that mass, then they call it a new name. Lah. If I want to call it Ali particle, it becomes Ali particle. <laughs> okay, you just create some names. Basically, you just smash things together and see what comes out. Okay, this is a very nice diagram. You will see if you see anything like this, that means particle come out. Okay, if it come out straight, means no charge. It's just going straight. But you see them do this spiral, spiral thing. Ah. Uh. Ah means that particle probably has some charge, positive, negative, who knows, whatever that is. Okay, this is the circle I was talking about. This is in Switzerland, 
If you ever go to Switzerland, you see the mountain at the back? Uh, Geneva, Switzerland is where they have one of the largest experiments now. Okay, that's where CERN is at. So you see this yellow ring, right? This is where they will send the particles. Huh? So in one, maybe, let's see, let's say it, our particle originate from, uh, let's say from here. Lah, okay, they will shoot one particle this way, they will shoot one particle this way, then they go around and then they collide each other somewhere else. Okay, they'll go around many times before colliding. Lah. But that's the whole idea. Why it's so big, it's under many, many cities. Welcome to Switzerland, home of particle physics. Wow. Current home of particle physics. Anyway, so they were all happily smashing things together and discovered lots of stuff. They discovered, like, oh my goodness, actually got so many, so many particles that is more smaller than the proton. Okay, um, do you need to memorize all this? Well, you need to memorize some important ones, not all of them. Okay, the most, the first one that they found, you call this first generation. See the one there? First generation, what did they find? They found, like, Oh, up, down, electron and electron neutrino. Ah, we've seen that word before. So electron, of course, lah. Electron, we already know. Uh, that's why I call first generation. Electron neutrino, they discovered it somehow. We won't go into that. But the new one they found was this up, down fella. What is this up and down? Ah, ah let me draw for you. So, when they smash together things, they discovered that, hey, your proton ah, actually is made out of three what we call quarks. The up quark, okay, another up quark, and a down quark. And then they are all held together by something. Uh, somehow they must stay together. Ma. If they break apart, then you don't have proton. So they're like, wow, very magical. Why is this up and down? Okay, these are called quarks. Okay, all this purple color one here is called quarks. And each of them have charge. You might want to memorize this one. So the up quark, has a charge of plus minus, uh, sorry, plus 2 over 3 E. Same for the charm and top. Wow. You see the name they choose are very charming, very strange, right? I also don't know why they choose that. You should ask the person who discovered these ones. This one also 2 over 3 E. La. Okay, 2 over 3 E. What is E elementary charge? Oh? If you're wondering what is this thing here, uh, that is just the mass energy of that. Okay, see, it's getting bigger and bigger, the number. So you need bigger and bigger energy to discover. So up and down was the first one to be discovered. Lor. Then you build a more powerful particle collider. Then you discover charm and strange. You build another more powerful one. You, you send these beams at very high energy, collide, then top and bottom come out. But they're very unstable. So they sometimes will uh, decay into up and down. Lor. Anyway, so all this across is 2 over 3e. Down quark is a different charge, a different charge, electrical charge, like I can think of it that way. 1 over 3e, also same now, 1 over 3e, that one you must know, at least for up and down. So memorize those. So down, strange, and bottom. First, sec first generation, second generation, third generation, all the purple ones, we call quarks. Quark, 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 quark. Okay. And well, since we're here, might as well go along with charges. Uh, electron, you know what the charge of electron is already, so this is negative 1e. Same for your muon and your tau on. Tau, tau on, uh, actually they call it tau on. These are all we call leptons. Okay, all the green color one. Don't worry, we'll have a classification later. Okay, so many, many particles come out. Wow. So, back to our proton. How did they come with this conclusion? Well, they kind of put a few things together. And you, because we know uh, the proton's charge is plus 1e, right? from previous nuclear physics. So, if you have a proton made of up, up and down quark, that means, oh, oh by the way, we can say this UUD, uh, up, up, down. Lazy to write everything. So that means the total charge, what is the up? Up is, yeah, just now we said it, ma, is a 2 over 3. Up again, 2 over 3, plus, what's the charge of, charge of this down? It's a negative, this is a positive, positive. Down is negative 1 over 3. So you add together what you get. Leh. So then the charge of a proton should be, what is 2 over 3 plus 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3? 1 e, lo. so plus 1 e. And that's how everything fit together. They're like, oh, yes, 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 this is how we can put things together. Not only they uh, broke down the proton, they also found out neutron uh, actually can break down into quarks. 
neutron and zero charge, right? So neutron, let's say you have one, two, three. You will take a guess lah, it's made out of what? How do you get a zero charge? You need an up, okay? Because up will be two over three. Uh, what else you need? Cannot add some more. Okay, I'll try down and down. La. So down and down. So this will be UDD. Plus negative 1 over 3. Actually, I just write minus. La. Minus 1 over 3. So this one will give you zero charge. Ta-da! That's how we know that it's made out of up quark and two down quarks. Okay, this is a Q, the charge. Again, somehow all these quarks are staying together. I don't know what to draw, so I draw a spring kind of thing to say like, oh, there's some kind of thing holding them together. But then, if you want to think about it, what actually is holding these things together? We come up with some names for it already. Okay, These are what we call the four fundamental uh, forces of the universe. Okay, Can you take a guess what they are? Think about it and see what are the fundamental forces. Don't say like tension, la, normal force. No, no, no. Fundamental forces. Of the universe. You can think of it this way. Number one, the first one, ding ding, is what we call the strong nuclear force. Ooh, what is this? This is the force that acts uh, on quarks. Oops, I should say acts on quarks and anti quarks. Anti, I have no space there. Okay, I put like that. Quarks or anti-quarks. So you see the green color spring thing that I draw, right? This one, this one. That is your fundamental uh, force, really. Strong nuclear force. Okay, I'm going to draw a line here. So this is our strong nuclear force that holds them together. Okay. Um, yeah, wondering like, what, what, why got a, what, what is this? To be honest, we don't really know. But we do know it's related somehow to your, maybe your gluon. Uh, okay. This one will help you hold things together. So you're up and up actually throwing gluon on each other and creates a force. So how does this actually relate? Uh, go and search out some videos. Uh, okay. So there's some related to strong nuclear force. These are all bosons, by the way, called force carriers. So these particles carry force. Wow. How does a particle carry force? Mind blowing. Very hard to break. It's okay. We just we just we just discovered this in the last like 10, 20, 30 years. So it's very new physics for everyone. Okay, uh what else? Okay, so this one force, you just need to know the name, lah, okay, and roughly what it acts on. Another force got strong, ah, means got weak, no? Okay, so weak nuclear force. They don't know what to call it. Mm, what is a weak nuclear force? It acts on all fundamental particles, ah. All the interaction between fundamental particles. So, all fundamental particles. So, all fundamental particles means all of these, no? all the quarks, all the leptons. When they interact with each other, you have some kind of weak nuclear force there. And your weak nuclear force is, well, you can say it's mainly related to these ones, la, bosons. The W and the Z, they don't know what to call it, so it's called W and Z. A lot of them, a lot of the interactions are from this W and Z la. Okay la. Are right, here mainly for interaction. Weak nuclear force. So if I throw a W at you, you throw a W at me, oh, got interaction any long Weak interaction. Okay, and these are on a very small scale. What do I mean by small scale? Means if you are 10 to the negative 15 meters away, then that is roughly the how, how far the scale of the force can be. La. If you're further away, then cannot already your quark here, your quark there, cannot. Okay. Uh, two more forces. Can you try and guess what are the other two forces? Fundamental forces. I know the first two are a bit new to us. But what's number three and number four? Number three is actually what we call the electromagnetic force. Electro. Magnetic. If you're wondering, is this related to electric force that we learn in electric field? Ah? Yes, but also got magnetic ma. You see? Electromagnetic. So electric magnetic field. A eh? sounds like electromagnetic wave. Eh? Maybe some related. Okay, this one mainly acts on charged particles. Because 
you must have charged, okay? Uh, and this is actually the range uh, is very big, uh, infinity meter. Uh. If you are here and you are in the next galaxy, there's some kind of interaction also. So as long as you got charge up. Uh. So that's what we call the electromagnetic force. Okay, sometimes related to the photons, people suspect. Okay. Uh EM question mark. Okay, I'll put a question mark there for you to study more if you want to, but not if you don't, it's okay. You don't need to know that at A levels. Uh last force. Almost there, almost there. Uh, can, you, can you think of a fundamental force? Ah? The one that is crucial to our existence. Well, that's called the um, gravitational force or gravity. Lah. You know, I'm just going to put gravity or FG. So gravity is actually a fundamental force that we did not really know how to think of until quite recently. Of course, gravity acts on all objects. Say objects that has mass, but then even we realize actually you know mass also kind of affected by gravity or question mark. Okay, so a lot of new things we don't know, don't know, don't know. This is like the this is at the edge of our knowledge already, lah. Okay, we are at the edge of scientific knowledge. Uh, range is infinity meter, very far away. You still can have gravitational force acting on you. Okay, um, and very very quite recently we discovered not we lah. Scientists, humanity discovered this thing called the Higgs boson. This Higgs they discovered is related to the gravitational force. Why do we have gravity? Why do we have ma mass? Why, what, what, what? So, if something is acting on you, a gravitational force acting on you, that's because that thing is throwing Higgs boson at you. So it's interacting with you. Oh, mind blown. This Higgs boson is a force carrier that is the one that causes our gravity so if you want to learn more about this again go and google it plenty of information pretty recent discovery i think 2008 ah eh forgot already go and check ah it's about 2008 they won a nobel prize for discovering the higgs boson just by looking at diagrams like this and like this and they tell oh the higgs boson and then they go and make theory lah everything okay so this is our zoo of uh, fundamental particles. Quite fascinating, a lot of them. Okay, and because there are so many, oh, eventually we scratch our heads and we're like, we need a way to classify all those. That's why we come up with these names, leptons, quarks. But then there are more ways to classify these types. So there are two types here, two primary types. Okay, you look at the purple one, quarks. The green ones, leptons. And then you put all these together in different combinations, or oh. Then you get proton, la, neutron, and so many, so many different particles that people decided, okay, hot, stop. We need to come up with a classification system. You know what a classification system is like? You know in biology, we like, oh, human is what genome, is what phylum, is what kingdom, animal kingdom, plant kingdom, got backbone, no backbone. So they draw a whole classification system for animals and, you know, life. So we do the same thing for particles. Okay, chemistry has the same thing, group one, group two, group three. This one is what type of metal, that one, alkali, blah, blah, blah. We do the same thing with particles, okay? So let's go and see uh, how can you classify all these particles and fundamental particles and make more sense out of them. Okay, so let's go take a look at that.